Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm playing around with some different ideas on content and trying to figure out how to make some unique things that you may not have seen in the past. And today I'm gonna experiment with a little bit of AI naming wars, where I'm gonna pit up against each other eight different naming tools. They're gonna pick a name for a brand and then I'm gonna score them based on some naming strategies and we're gonna see which one of them performed the best. So thanks for joining and let's dig into this epic competition. We'll get started by just kind of going over the rules of naming in general, just naming strategies. And if you don't offer naming to your design clients or your creative agency clients, it's such a fun and valuable service to offer. In summary, it's coming up with a name for a product or for a company or for a service. It could be a naming anything, an app or a website or some person or a whatever. But how do you come up with that name? And it usually requires a lot of brainstorming and that's what makes these AI tools pretty interesting that they do a lot of this brainstorming for you. They spit out to you a bunch of different names and you don't have to go through all the thinking and research to do it yourself. Now, some of them are better than others and some of them outright suck. And we're gonna dig in and figure out which one's which. Now, when you're naming, we're gonna judge our names based on the following criteria. Is it memorable? Is it something that people remember when they hear it? Is it spellable? Like, are you gonna have to spell it like I do my first name, M-I-C-H-A-E-L. Only the people named Michael know that the A comes before the E. Everybody else in the world struggles, whether it's the A before the E, blah, blah, blah. I gotta spell my name all the time. And then you end with Janda, and nobody knows how to spell that either. So I'm spelling my name all the time, it's not ideal. And when you're creating a brand, you wanna have something that's spellable. You wanna have it easy to say. And I like to think of fun to say as well. I did a video where we came up with the name Zazzy for a children's toy, music toy. And Zazzy, it's fun, it's a fun name to say. Google, fun name to say. Nike, fun name to say. These kinds of brands that check the boxes on good names. Okay, the next category is meaningful. Does the name itself have meaning? Or do we have to explain what it means every time we say the name? Is it unique? Unique meaning does it differentiate from all the competitors in the space? And the final criteria we're gonna judge by is is it ownable? Ownable meaning can you get the .com domain? Can you get the social media handles? Okay, that's our criteria. Now we're gonna dig into the rules of this game. I'm gonna use the exact same input for each of the AI naming tools. I'm gonna to choose the best name. Some of them spit out like a hundred, so I'm gonna choose the best one. We're gonna put it in our sheet and we're gonna score it in each of the categories on a scale of one to 10. Then we'll add up all the scores and see which name wins and therefore which AI naming tool wins. So that's it, let's get playing the naming game. Kinda like the dating game, but not as fun. Let's get ready to rumble. Okay, we changed sets a little here. I'm in my office now and we're gonna look at what I have set up for this contest. First thing, I have a spreadsheet set up right here that allows us to put in the names that we get from the eight contestants and each of the categories. Now, what we're gonna be trying to name is a pizza restaurant. And for those of you that know some of my content and courses, I use pizza restaurant for like my generic thing that we're branding in a lot of different pieces of content. So today we're gonna to come up with a name for a pizza restaurant and we're gonna score it in all of these different categories and we're gonna see which of these AI tools wins. Okay, let's dig into our first contestant and that is Business Name Generator, BNG. So simple interface, pop in your keywords and then click Get Started and we get a whole bunch of different 
names. Seems like it spit out three pages worth of names. This is one of the things you'll find on some of these is that they just throw out a bunch of names to see if something sticks. And in my opinion, I don't know if that's a lot of artificial intelligence. Like I can come up with a lot of dumb names all on my own. So I'm a little turned off by that, but let's look at what we got. We got a few different things like pizza Fed Restaurant, Lord Pizza, Pizza Jet, Nibble Restaurant, Pizza Porium. Pizza Porium, that's not too bad. Let's go down. I'll take a closer look at these and I'll let you know what I land on. So as I, as I start clicking through the pages, there's it just keeps going. It's going to go forever. Like I got, I'm on pizza page seven. Here's page nine. It's so many different names. And this isn't what we really want from an AI tool to just spit out a whole bunch of stuff. Let me see the intelligence inside of this. Make a recommendation of some of the top names and not just a spam of all of the names. And I know we're not giving it a lot of keywords, but I do think that what I want from artificial intelligence is a little bit more intelligence, not so much just throwing spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks. Okay, Pizza Porium is what I'm gonna go with from here. I, there were so many, I didn't even wanna look through all of them. It, it was the first one that popped out to me as an option, so we're gonna go with that. Now, is it memorable? I'm gonna score it pretty high on memorable at a seven. Spellable, I'm gonna hit it a little bit here because of the porium at the end. Not sure it's super spellable. Easy to say or fun to say. Pizza porium is pretty fun to say. I'm gonna score it pretty high there. Not an eight, I'm gonna give it a seven. And does it have meaning? Yes, has meaning, it scores high there. Is it unique? In my perception, it's unique. Let's score it at a seven there. And is it, oops, I'm not supposed to show you the score. Is it ownable? That we'll check right now. So I'm just gonna jump into Google and we're gonna do a quick check for pizza, porium, and what do we get? We get several different options that already exist. Pizza Porium in Vijay Nagar Indoor. So there's a restaurant already called Pizza Porium and they already own some of the social media handles. So we're gonna score it pretty low on ownable at a three. Now let's jump into Jasper. And Jasper is an AI writing platform. It's pretty cool. It's got a great interface and a lot of prompts and things. It connects to ChatGPT on the back end for the AI. But it, it is a pretty cool tool. You should check it out. And they're advertising like crazy. So we're gonna go in on here to their product or name generator and we're gonna type in pizza restaurant and see what we get for names from this. Okay, so this, I like, it gave us six outputs. Slice of Heaven Pizza, Pizza Palooza, which it gave to us twice. Actually, it gave it to us three times. Okay, so Pizza Palooza. So here we go to the artificial intelligence, but it's not very intelligent. You give me six total names and three of them are exact duplicates. Although Pizza Palooza, I like it. So we're gonna go with Pizza Palooza for Jasper. Pizza, pa, it was two words, Palooza. Pizza Palooza. I'm gonna give it pretty high on memorable. Spelling, I'm gonna score it a little higher than Pizza Porium. Easy to say or fun to say. I'm gonna score it pretty high on this. I do like it a lot, Pizza Palooza. Meaningful, sounds like they got a lot of different kinds of pizza there. Unique, the next one, to me, it's also unique. I'm gonna score it at seven, and then let's check on Ownable and see what we have on a quick Google search, Pizza Palooza. And we have Pizza Palooza in Denver, Pizza Palooza, Denver. So here we've got it, uh, a competitor. 
and there's a few different options, but the Palooza Brewery, anyways, um, we're going to have to score it pretty low, and it's actually disappointing to me because what we want is something ownable. If we're generating names, the artificial intelligence, in my opinion, should be spitting back to us bona fide options of things that we can own. So we're going to say it's a three on ownable. Now let's go to Namelix as our next contestant. Namelix, another business name generator, and we're going to put in here pizza restaurant. Okay, now this one's interesting because it gives us some additional prompts to pick from. So all styles of name or alternate spelling or compound words or two words like Facebook and Bitcoin, short phrase like Dollar Shave Club, real words like Apple and Amazon, non-English words like Toyota and Audi. I like that it's giving us these, a variety of different options. I'm going to put in here all styles and then select the generation randomness and I'm going to put it at medium. So all styles, medium randomness, and we've got pizza restaurant. We're going to click generate and see what this gives us. Now, this is an interesting thing, too, in the results from Namelix. It throws them into a kind of a logo presentation. I'm not positive that this is a good route to go because it can skew our response based on how the little logo looks and not just the word itself or the name itself. So I think it's a cool idea, but I think that it skews perception of the results. And we know that the, the logo needs to have more thought behind it than just throwing it in some font and some colors and throwing it on the wall. So um, I think they're jumping the gun and presenting these like a logo. But we've got up here Pizza Bites, which is okay. Pizza Tree. Pizza Tree, I like it. Pizzeria Deli. Slice Pizza. Pizza Food. I'm looking for something unique and memorable. And I'm going to scrub through all of these on Namelix and see what I can find for our choice from, from this AI tool. Okay, here's one that I like. Papa Mia. Papa Mia. It's fun to say. It's got, it checks a lot of boxes for me. Papa Mia is what we're going to choose from Namelix. So Papa Mia is now in our spreadsheet. Is it memorable? I'm going to score it pretty high on memorable. A little more memorable than the other two options. Spellable? much more spellable. I'm going to score it pretty high there. Easy to say and fun to say. Both of those, it scores high. Meaningful. Okay, we're going to have to ding it a little bit here because we didn't have the word pizza in it, so it doesn't really say pizza. Papa Mia does sound Italian, so it's not like a bad choice, just like Papa John's as an example, but it's not as high as Pizza Palooza and Pizza Porium. So We'll score it a six on meaningful, unique. I'm also gonna ding it a little bit, six on unique. And then is it ownable? Let's take a look for Papa Mia pizza. Uh-oh, Papa Mia's wood, uh, wood oven pizza, Papa Mia online or Pizza Mia. Pizza Mia online, Papa Mia's Pizza. Eh, there's a lot of options that are in that vein. Papa Mia's Pizza on DoorDash. So we're going to score it a little lower on Ownable, and we're going to give it a three like our other options. Next, we're going to look at Luca. 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 I'm going to go with Luca. And we're going to type in here, pizza restaurant, and see what we get. Invented names, dynamic, innovative, and edgy. Okay, nice. It gives us a good sampling here. And a see more button if we're not satisfied with these, these uh, first batch. But it's not overwhelming. Like some of the other ones that just had hundreds of names on the very first page and then pagination to see more. I do like how they handled that on the user interface here a little bit better. And we've got Go Pizzeria, End Dinner, Sa Pepperoni, Art Cafe, 
Pepperoni Pro. Pepperoni Pro, not too bad. It would get dinged on the spellable side of things. It's pepperonis, long, pepperoni pro, not. I do like this meatballer, the meatballer, um, but it doesn't have enough meaning for me to pick it as the one. Let's go with la pizza, la pizza. Okay, la pizza on Luca. It's memorable. It's pretty memorable. I'll score it high there. Spellable. Much more spellable than some of our other options. Papa Mia, it's at least as spellable as Papa Mia, so I'm not going to score it higher than that. Easy to say, fun to say, both of those scores pretty high. Meaningful scores pretty high. Unique, we'll see. I've not seen something La Pizza, but it's can't be too unique because la in romance languages is the and pizza is the pizza. So it's not so unique, but it's as unique as Pizza Porium and Pizza Palooza. And then ownable. Let's see. I bet you this isn't very ownable and it's spitting some results to us that aren't so ownable. So here we got in South Miami, we got in St. Louis. We've got Slice Life in New Jersey, La Pizza. Ownable, it's getting dinged on this, down to a two on Ownable. We could own it in a smaller market, but just not as a bigger global or national brand. Now let's go to Shopify. Shopify has a business name generator. We'll click Generate Names and see what we get. Now you can see here, Shopify gives us a ton of names, kind of like the business name generator. It's probably built on the exact same platform as that, just tying to chat GPT. But let's see what we got. Most of these are saying pizza restaurant at the end, as if we wanted that to be part of our name, our business name. But we're trying to find a name for a pizza restaurant. So I'm going to ding it on its intelligence in understanding our prompt. Man, this one's tough because to be honest, most of these aren't very good. Okay, I'm just gonna pick one here that's a little bit more normal, not too crazy. Phase Pizza. Phase Pizza Restaurant is what it has here as the option. So I'm gonna drop in Phase Pizza right here and Memorable, it's pretty generic. It's okay, I'm gonna score it a six. Spellable, it'll score pretty high on Spellable. Both of those words, very spellable words. Easy to say, it's an easy to say. Meaningful, it scores pretty high. Unique, Phase Pizza, doesn't sound very unique to me. I'm gonna go with five on unique, and I'm gonna guess that it was spitting out to us some unownable or non-ownable options. So phase pizza, phase pizza, phase, F-A-Y-E-S, there's phase two pizza, phase two pizza, and that's it on the, on the first page of Google results. So. That's not too bad. So phase two pizza, phase pizza, we're gonna score it a little more ownable than the other options. But again, it's not like some made up new word that we know we can own. Okay, let's go look at the next option, Truick. Truick, the world's most advanced business name generator. Your perfect business name is only a few steps away. Pizza restaurant. And here come our results. Pizza Rama, Pizza Paradise, Pizza Pizza Hut. What? Okay. Wendy's. What do we got here? Truick. That was the business name generator. And it's given me options like Wendy's, Pizza Hut, Pizza Paradise because pizzarestaurant.com is not available. See other great alternative names below. The alternative name to pizzarestaurant.com is pizzahut.com, but that's not available. We know that. Pizza Hut, international franchise, wendys.com, that's not gonna be available. So I'm really disappointed in Truick and how to start an LLC 
In fact, I'm disappointed enough that I'm going to scratch them from the competition. They are disqualified. <coughs> Next, let's go to Brand Root and see what they give us. The smartest premium business name generator ever. That's a bold statement. Let's see how it does. Cool little loading screen. Ooh, I'm excited. Okay, again, like Namelix, it spit these into a bunch of different logo styles for us. And we got Pizza Limited, Pizza Bite. <laughs> I get it, B-Y-T-E. Uh, pizza Habit, Honey Lush and Eat Soft. Like, what do these have to do with pizza? They don't sound very pizza-y to me. Mystic Digest, Gourmet Men, Purple Bison. So this feels like some random options, not a lot of concentrated, this is for the pizza restaurant types of options. On the bottom, we can easily click generate 60 new names, but I feel like that's cheating. AI or artificial intelligence should be giving us some intelligent response. The one I think I'm gonna go with here is Presto Pie. And what I don't like, and I mentioned this when the other one was spitting out logo marks for us, um, that it can skew the perception. Because if you look at this, Presto Pie, pie is another word for pizza, pizza pie but Presto Pie, and then above it, they've got like an apple pie or something for the icon. So this skews the perception of what might be an okay word or name for this business by putting it into a logo. So I don't like that in these, these naming tools, uh, but I do think that Presto Pie is an interesting enough pizza restaurant name that we can put it in our spreadsheet. Okay, Presto Pie, memorable. It's gotta be at least as high as some of the other ones. Spellable, very spellable. Uh, to me, I'm gonna go with a seven on spellable, easy to say. Presto Pie, Presto Pie, scored as high as the others, meaningful. It's gonna get dinged a little bit here because you have to make that association between pie and pizza. Somebody could hear it and think that it is sweet pies. The, and not pizza pies. Unique, um, it's fine. I'll go with a seven and then ownable. Let's check and see what we've got in Google Presto Pie Pizza. And we've got Presto Pie Pizzeria, Presto Pie Pizzeria on Instagram, Presto Craft Kitchen, Presto Pie Pizzeria in Calgary on Facebook, Presto Pie. Presto Pie Pizzeria, it's not very ownable. This is a little disappointing, honestly, that these that we're getting results that aren't very ownable. And if you're if you're using a business name generator, I would want the the artificial intelligence to be searching for possible names that we could actually own and not giving me things like Pizza Hut that Truick gave us. Okay, so pre Presto Pie, I gave it a three on Ownable. And we'll go to the last one. Now, ChatGPT, all the rage, everybody's using it. And a lot of these tools are hooking into the AI of ChatGPT. And they're layering on top of it some of their own requirements in those prompts. And it's doing it behind the scenes. And that's what these tools are built on. But ChatGPT is the chat-based interface into that AI that's uh, started and owned by OpenAI. So here we're gonna say, um, give us five names for pizza restaurants, for a pizza restaurant. Now this one isn't just set up as a name generator, so I do need to ask it a little bit more specific of a prompt, and I'm just gonna say, give us 10 names for a pizza restaurant, and we'll see what we get. Pie Palace, Topped Up, Donation, Saucy Slice, Cruft, Crust Crafters, Pizza Perfection, The Pie House, Dough Delight, Saucy Spoon, The Slice Factory. So a couple interesting ones in here. Pie Palace isn't too bad. Saucy Slice, I like that. I like the word saucy. It's a fun word to say. And then we have The Slice Factory, which is also an interesting option. Um, 
pizza perfection, the pie house. The, the pie house is okay, a little generic. Dough delight sounds like it could be cookie dough or a bread shop. Donation, it's kind of a fun idea, but not for a pizza restaurant. I think I'm gonna go with the slice factory for this one and we'll drop it into our spreadsheet here, the slice factory. Now, we're probably gonna end up with ownable problems with that one as well. So you go to memorable, the slice factory. It's as memorable as the rest, spellable. Very spellable. I'll score it a little higher than some of the others. It's easy to say the slice factory. It's not as fun to say as some of the others, so I'll ding it a little meaningful it's meaningful but it doesn't use the word pizza which is good and bad because it makes it more unique so the slice factory will put it at an eight on unique and now let's check own ability which i think we're going to get dinged on the slice factory the slice factory chicken wings for sale they sell pizza wings and salad slice factory online pizza factory menus for the pizza factory Slice Factory in Illinois. So it's getting dinged like all the rest of them and given just a three. Okay, so there's the results. We've got our eight contestants. One of them was disqualified for recommending the word, the name Pizza Hut to us, leaves us seven contestants and we're all in a score of 37 to 40. We have three options that hit 40. Uh, Luca, Luca, Shopify, and ChatGPT all hit 40. So those are the winners, I suppose. But in my real opinion, none of them are winners. Like, I don't know if this AI naming actually got us anywhere better than where we would have gotten just with human brainstorming. I'm pretty disappointed, to be honest, in these business name generators. Now, if we use them to spark ideas and then we go and start getting more creative based on the ideas that sparked, like using the word factory or using the word presto, uh, and then we play with alternate ways to use that and we search for the own ability of them. I think you can get some value out of these business name generators, but based on this, it's going to be a long time before a business name generator AI replaces a human coming up with names and going through that naming process. All right, let's go wrap this up in my studio real quick. Okay, we're back. I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty disappointed. I know I just said that in the other room, but Really, I'm pretty disappointed. But a couple of takeaways. I prefer the ones that had a little more direct results, not these ones that just spam out 100 something names. I can come up with 100 dumb names all on my own. I don't need artificial intelligence to help me with that. Name generators, they can help you spark an idea, but there still is a lot of human creativity and research that is gonna need to go into coming up with a great name for a product or a business than just what these AI tools are spitting out. It's a lot of just spaghetti at the wall. You still need a creative person. You need somebody, even when the tools get better, you need somebody who can look at it and say, yes, that's right. That is the right choice. And that's why creative people are gonna be tied to these AI tools for a long time. They're good to start using in your creative business, but I don't see your clients deciding to just go and use a name generator rather than hire a creative agency to come up with a name. If they've got funding and they're trying to build a big business, they're not just gonna rely on some name generator, click a button and pick one of the hundred spammy names that come out of it. And I think that last thing that I'll throw out to you is that if you're not offering naming, it's so fun. It's, I mean, it's traumatic because once you start going and trying to think of a name, man, it's all you can think of. I've, I've done a lot of naming and getting into the, the thesaurus and coming up with alternate ways to say things and then searching for availability. And then, oh, I've got it. It's, this is the perfect name. And then you find that there's somebody in 
in Denmark somewhere using that same name. And it's so uh, exhausting. You gotta be really creative and it's a, it's a really fun outlet for creativity. And when you land on that name, man, it's so fun. So consider offering naming as a service. These tools aren't gonna do the work for you, but they can spark some ideas to help you get started. Okay, thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you like this and I hope it helps you see the way that we can try and use these AI tools for better and for worse, how where they stand in the world as we know it today. Uh, nobody really needs to be worried that an AI naming tool is gonna replace the need for humans to name products and businesses anytime soon. Thanks a lot, see you again soon. Oh, and hit the subscribe button, drop some comments, leave a like, all that stuff. Share this with all your friends, you know, and watch it like four or five times. That'd be helpful. Thanks so much. We'll see you again.